Okay, so today we are going to discuss consignments. <coughs> Consignment, okay. is a special type of business process. Okay, I'm gonna put everybody on mute. So if you have questions, just unmute yourself. Consignment is a special type of business process. It is an order to cash business process, but it is different because it's not the regular order delivery billing kind of a thing. It's a little different in terms of the way it is performed and uh, in terms of the number of transactions, so on and so forth. <clears throat> First, we will discuss a scenario and see why this kind of a business process is required in that kind of scenario. Then you can relate to that business scenario. Okay? So, here we go. <clears throat> I'll give you two examples. Okay. The first example is car sales. Okay. So uh, take the example of Ford. So here is Ford, Ford in Detroit, Michigan. Okay. That's where they are headquartered. And Let's take a city, say Boston, where there are, you know, tens of Ford dealers, right? If not hundreds. So dealer one, dealer two. Let's only talk about one or two dealers. In fact, only one dealer. You can extrapolate it to the other dealers. The process is very similar. So in Boston, there is dealer one. Who will maintain an inventory of cars? Different kinds of cars. Physical inventory. So there is a Mustangs. There is Fusion. You know, different kinds of cars in different numbers, different colors, so on. But this dealer does not purchase these cars because he cannot purchase it and keep it there. Ford will send these cars over to this dealer on what is called as a consignment. Now, how is that different from a sale? So consignment is different from a sale. Consignment is different, sale is different. In a consignment, the cars are just placed at the customer's location. In this case, for Ford, the customer is the dealer. The cars are placed at the customer's location, but they're not sold. It's not a sale yet. The difference being, when they are placed at the customer's location, they are still a property of the company, in this case, Ford. Until, let's say, Siva comes along and inquires for this car, likes a Ford Mustang, and wishes to purchase. That's when the dealer takes out one of these Mustangs from the lot, you know the lot, right, the lot of cars, and gives it to Siva. And when that process happens, it is deemed as a sale of a product from the lot to the dealer, from the perspective of Ford. From the perspective of dealer, yes, it is sold to Siva. From the perspective of Ford, since dealer has used it, he'll deem it as a sale. Until then, these are all, you can say, given as a loan. Okay. Keep it with you. When you use it, you pay for it. When you don't use it, don't pay for it. As simple as that. For example, one of the deal dealer, let's say, there is no sale here, but he wants to use it for his own self. He wants to buy it for his own self, maybe for his daughter. 
still it is considered a sale from Ford's perspective because they have removed it from the lot and they have started using it. Right? Now, that is the key difference between a sale and a consignment. Any questions there? Alright. Now, we are going to talk about all the different processes in a consignment. Okay? So, what are the different processes in a consignment? There are four processes in a consignment. Four different processes. What are the different processes? Consignment, fill up. Consignment, pick up. Let me change the color. Let's just talk about these two. Consignment fill up is when the Ford's truck comes and then dumps all the cars into the lot. So they have just filled up the lot. That doesn't mean it's a sale yet. It's still the property of Ford company. Consignment pickup is when the dealer says, hey, you know what? I'm not able to sell these Ford Fusions. Can you take four of them away? Ford says, sure, okay. I'm going to pick up this consignment and take it back to the company. That's called consignment pickup. Consignment fill-up and consignment pickup are complementary processes. One complements the other. But the key here is to identify the fact that in both these processes, the inventory from the company is going to a lot on the customer's location. In this case, it's going to dealer one located in Boston. That's it. It's not a sale. The dealer one has not purchased any of the cars yet. Now, when the dealer wishes to purchase it or start using it for himself or his customers, then when he withdraws from the lot, okay, let me change the color here. You may see it in blue. When he withdraws inventory from the lot for consumption. For consumption meaning his own consumption, his own daughter's consumption, his customer's consumption, like I can go to the dealer and purchase a car. I am his customer. So either way, if he wishes to withdraw the car from the lot or use the car from the lot for sale or internal purpose, then that process is called consignment issue, consignment issue, okay, the consignment issue is a process where the customer withdraws from the lot and uses it or sells it or does anything with it, it's his headache. From the perspective of board, it's a consignment issue. This is deemed as a sale from a Ford's perspective. Okay? Now, let's say this car has been sold to Siva. And Siva uses it for one day and then finds out that it's stopping in between and it's not functioning properly and he wishes to return it as a lemon. Okay, he wishes to return it and says, hey, you know what, this is not working fine, so take it back. Now, this dealer puts the car back in the lot. And this process is called consignment return. If the, if the customer puts the goods back in the lot, especially because they are not working or, you know, for some reasons, because once the customer uses the product, then in order to return it, the, the piece has to be defective, right? So consignment return, it's called as a consignment return. So this process of consignment return is similar to your sales process of return. 
right? Sale is opposite to return, right? Sale is when you send out goods to the customer, return is when you take back goods from the customer. So these processes are the parallels between OR and RE. Now, consignment fill up and consignment pick up are processes that fill the lot, but they are not considered sale because the property, the cars in the lot are still a property of Ford. Okay, now I'll give you another example. <coughs> Shiva? Yes. Uh, this is Sonic here. Yeah? Uh, can I ask you one thing? Uh, on perspective of a, uh, uh, the company, how does the company know whether it is a sales return or uh, if it is a consum after consumption, if the, uh, the dealer returns it? How do the company came to know? Is there any specific uh, code or uh, process for that? All are different processes, right? When the, when the dealer returns the car to the lot, it's called consignment return. It's a different process. It has to be dealt with using a separate document type. Separate document type? Yes, separate document type. All these four processes that I've defined, consignment pickup, consignment fill up, consignment issue, consignment return, are different document types. I'll, I'll give you what those document types are going forward. All right. Okay. Thank you. Another example that I want to give is um, example of a factory, like a steel factory. Okay. This is a steel factory, and let's say it's in Pittsburgh. And what does a steel factory take? I don't know, coke or coal, and something, something, doesn't matter. So iron ore is procured from, let's say somewhere in Arizona. There are some iron ore mines in Arizona. And let's just take one vendor. This is the miner. So the miner mines the iron ore from Arizona and it has to ship it to this Pittsburgh steel factory. Now, this steel factory, as you know, runs 24 by 7. It cannot stop. The urns, the, the, the processes in a steel factory cannot stop. They have to run 24 by 7 for continuous profitable operation. So, <clears throat> they have to have an excessive supply of iron ore and coke readily available so that at any given point in time there should not be a shortfall of raw materials that they need for running the factory, right? The raw materials being iron ore and coke. Now here is the pot where uh, the, the urn or the pot where they take the coke and iron ore and then melt it and then produce steel. Right? So there should always be iron ore available. So if iron ore is not available, they cannot run. So <clears throat> in a typical factory, say a Honda factory of cars, um, the inventory that, that should be available, let's say uh, tires or engines or chassis or any of the cars that are procured will be procured when required. It's called just-in-time inventory. <clears throat> But in case of industries like this, they are not procured on the fly because suddenly right now if iron ore is not available, you cannot place an order to Arizona miner and he cannot deliver it in one day. It's not possible physically. You have to place an order well in advance and then they have to deliver it. So the business model has evolved in such a way that the miner will just go and dump the iron ore in the lot at the factory's location in Pittsburgh. So whenever the dumping happens, it is still a property of the miner. The iron ore, even though it's physically at the Pittsburgh location, is still a property of the miner. And this process from the miner's perspective is called consignment fill-up, as usual. And if the iron ore is excess here, maybe he wishes to withdraw some of it, 
he can always take it back and that is called consignment pickup. See, it's not called a sale, it's called fill up and pick up because you're just relocating your inventory to a different place for the convenience of your customer. That's it. <coughs> they are not sale, they are still a property of the buyer. So you're relocating part of the inventory to the lot by filling up his lot, the customer's lot. And if you don't want so much inventory there, maybe you think there is too much there, you can pick up some inventory from the lot and get it back to your <coughs> um, your location, your warehouse, which is the miner's warehouse. So we are talking about this consignment process from the miner's perspective. <coughs> now, <coughs> the company can use the iron ore and when, he, when it uses it, so not the company, the customer, the steel factory. When it uses it, it is consuming part of that lot, and that process is called consignment issue. Again, from the miner's perspective, here, this is the seller. The company is the buyer. So we always look at things from a seller's perspective because we are learning SD, right? Sales and distribution. If we were learning MM, the process would have been different. But since we are learning SD, we are looking at things from a seller's perspective. So from the miner's perspective, when the steel company takes out goods from the lot, he takes permission or he there will be somebody over there, some stores manager here, uh, who will say, okay, take, take so many tons of iron ore, okay. I will record it as a consignment issue. Let's say the... Um, uh, company takes in the raw material and whenever the raw material is being used, there will be a quality department, right? They will test what quality of raw material it is. Not all raw material is the same. So uh, let's say in order to produce a certain grade of steel, 1% um, of iron ore is required in that raw. Sometimes, uh, you know, because of the variations in the earth, uh, it might not have that 1%. So in which case, they'll just say, okay, this did not pass the quality, so I'm going to return this over to you. And that is called a consignment return. And that they are returning it to the lot. So anything that happens between the lot and the customer is called issue and return. Anything that happens between the company and the lot is called fill up and pick up. Okay? Now, let me explain that process a little more formally here. See? The company is filling up the customer's lot and that is called a consignment fill up. Okay? Now, the company, the customer can choose to use the goods by withdrawing goods from the lot, and that is called a consignment issue. Now, the customer might also choose to return goods to the lot because it's defective, or it could be for another reason, any other reason, depending on the nature of the product. And that is called a consignment return. Now, the company can choose to pick goods from the lot and take them back to their warehouse, and that is called a consignment pickup. The intermediary step here is the lot, which is still a property of the company, but used by the customer at his convenience because business, the nature of the business demands it. Okay, so we have seen two examples where this could happen. Now, how do you create these consignments? So let me create a consignment and show you how the consignment process works, okay? So these are independent processes, meaning, so let me take this example. First, I'll give you the document types. What are the four different processes that we have talked about? Consignment, fill up, consignment, pick up, consignment, issue, consignment, return. These are the four processes, right? What are the different document types for it? CF, F for fill up. CP, V for pickup. Simple, right? 
Confinement issue C I. Confinement return C O N R con R consignment return. This one is a little different. So you don't even need to remember this document types. You can just go and search. So consignment filler is C F. Consignment pickup is C P. Consignment issue is C I. Consignment return is con R. So let's try to create a consignment and see how it works. It's not very different from the way you create a regular transaction. Okay. Go to VA01. There is no special transaction to create the consignment. The regular standard VA01. Okay. And the first transaction is consignment fill up, right? CF. And as usual, thousand ten zero zero. Enter. Enter your sold to customer. Enter your material quantity. Let's give a weird number, say sixty seven. Okay, remember that number, sixty seven. Enter. Okay. <clears throat> Look at the item category KBM. It's not TAN. It's something else. Okay. Now you can choose to deliver this consignment by going here and clicking on deliver. Something is missing here. Let's go edit it. Shipping point. Somebody has screwed up the shipping point. Okay, so here is the delivery. We are trying to create the delivery. We should pick the delivery quantity. Go to subsequent functions, create transfer order. This process is usual. Now we are in the process of creating the delivery for the consignment fill up. Okay? It's very simple. This process is not different from a regular order delivery, order relevant delivery. We are going to create a transfer order, pick it, pack it, and then PGI it. Now, I'm going to highlight the differences and the relevant topics come up. I'm going to open the delivery again in change mode and do a PGI. Okay, posting only possible. I'm going to fix this. Okay, try doing the PJ again. Okay, the delivery has been created. Now, can I try to do the billing for this? No, billing is not possible for this. So if you want to force doing the billing for this, you can take this delivery, control C, Go to VF01, VF01, enter, put your delivery number there, try to create a delivery, no, incorrect. You go to edit, log, it will say this document is not relevant for billing. Why? Let's go here. So what have we done? We have created a consignment filler. And we have created a delivery. We have pick, back, VGA. If you try to do a billing for this, it does not work. So a consignment fill up cannot be built. But probably by now you understand the reason why. A consignment fill up 
is not a sale. So you cannot invoice the customer. This type of document is not relevant or related. Okay. Can anybody tell me where this is configured? It's configured in a couple of places. Can you tell me the two places where it is configured, the consignment fill up is con process is configured in such a way that this process is not relevant for the list? You can go to the document type first. Okay. Go to the consignment fill up. Select it and sorry. Go to the billing section. You see, it's blank. That means you cannot create a billing document for a consignment fill up. Okay, this is the first indicator. The second indicator is go to the item category and select the item category that was created for a consignment fill up, ABN. So go into item category and look at billing relevance. It's blank. That means it is not relevant for billing. Because of these reasons, even though you forced to do a, a billing for this document type, it was not billed. The system says it is not relevant for billing. So why is it not relevant for billing? Because it is configured that way. Where is it configured that way? In the document type as well as the item category. Alright, so let's come back to the process. Fill up, consignment fill up. Now, <clears throat> some quantity, 67 quantity, 9 item 10, M01, some 67 quantity has been pulled out from the lot and then placed at the customer's location. Right? Can we see that stock in MMBE? Yes. We can go to MMBE, which is a stock situation. Enter your material. Okay? And then enter execute this transaction customer consignment 67 do you see that <coughs> see in the 1200 plant in the different storage locations there are so much stock like 2000 200000 so on but the customer consignment is 67 <coughs> okay customer consignment is a special kind of stock so it is reflected differently okay it is reflected differently, and that's what we have seen as special stock. So, in order to see it, you have to check this special stock. Okay, check this special stock and execute, and you'll see that the customer consignment for this material for this plant is 67. Okay, that means 67 of it is not readily available for us to sell to the next customer because it's at one of our customers' location. But remember, it is still our stock. Although it has been removed from the unrestricted use and put in customer consignment, it is still our stock. And from the purposes of valuation, valuation means how much stock we have if you want to value it. Oh, you have 200,000 quantity of stock. Each piece is worth $10. So you got $2 million worth of stock. So from the purpose of valuation, this stock is still ours. Right now, let's right. try to do a con yes. Um, as we have seen, uh, 67 uh, number of uh, commodities. Do we have provision to see the number of customers, like uh, wherever no, the different? Not by customer. We cannot see. Not by customer. We can only see okay. the entire lot. All right. Okay. The next process is consignment pickup. CP. So again, 10, what we'll do is, we'll do a M01, and we will take 17 out of it. So remaining, or 18 out of it. Okay, 67 minus 18 is 49. So 49 should remain. So we'll do a consignment pickup, we'll do a return, we'll do return um, picking, and PGR, and see how the stock is getting affected. Okay, let's do that. So VA01, what is the transaction for this? 
consignment pickup, CP. Now you see, we don't need to create this pickup process with reference to the original process because we might have sent n number of consignment fill-ups. Doesn't matter. And we can do n number of consignment pickups. None of them need to be created with reference to another. That's one key point you should understand. Okay? See, I'm not creating it with reference. The customer and material is the key. So for this customer, this material is sent out as a consignment or picked up as a consignment. That's all that matters. So go to M01, same material. Okay, if it's a different material, maybe you can pick up, maybe you can pick up. Depends on whether the customer stock is there or not. So we want to pick up quantity of 80. Right? Is that right? 80. So let's go do uh, return delivery. Okay, as usual, we're going to go fix the shipping point thing. Deliver. Okay, we don't need to pick up in case of return delivery. All we need to do is do a PGR, post goods receipt. Picking is only relevant for outbound. Okay, so return delivery has been saved. Now let's go to MMVE and look at the stock situation. M01, special stock is checked on and click execute. You see this? 42. So the stock, the unrestricted stock would have increased by 18 and the customer consignment has gone down by quantity of 18 and now it has become 49. Okay, now we have seen two different business processes here, consignment fill-up, consignment pickup. The next business process is a consignment issue. Now the customer has a stock of 49 in the lot. Can he take some from the lot? Yes, of course. Let's take a quantity of 5. Okay, a consignment issue, quantity 10, M01. The quantity of 5. So out of 49, if you take out 5, we should be remaining with a quantity of 44. Now we should do a <coughs> delivery, take back VGI, and then see the effect of it. Now one more thing. Can you do an invoice for a pickup? No. Again, this is not a sale. Both fill up and pick up cannot be invoiced. You can try it on your system. Try invoicing this pickups delivery. You will not be able to do it. Alright. Next process we are going to do is the issue. Consignment issue for this material quantity is 5. How do we do that? BA01 as usual. So consignment pick, um, uh, issue is CI. Enter. Again, we don't need to create the reference. The customer and material is the key. M dash zero one quantity of five. Okay, so we are issuing quantity five from the lot to the customer. So go here and do the delivery. As usual, we fix the shipping point thing. and try to do the delivery. Okay. Now, do a PGI because we don't need to do picking because the, the goods are already at the customer's location so we don't need to do pick up at our warehouse. So he can pick up the goods, the five quantity, and we can do a PGI directly. So let's go to MMBE and see the stock situation. M01 and look at the stock. It is 44. So 49 minus a consignment issue of 5 is 44. That's the consignment stock at this point. Now, this delivery can be invoiced. I'm going to try to do that. Let's go back. Go to VF01. Enter. 
the delivery number is here enter see quantity of 5 can be invoiced to save it and your invoice will be created this is called invoicing that consignment issue okay now the customer can also choose to return goods to the lot. Now there is a quantity of 44 in the lot. So in the um, lot, 44 in the lot. Now let's say, let's do a consignment return of quantity 6. That should make it 50 in the lot. Okay. Let's try to do a consignment return. B is 0, 1. Enter C O N R Enter Thousand Enter Make sure it is left created as blank Enter Order reason Some order reason will give returns Enter Enter And then M01 Quantity of Six. Enter. Make sure the shipping point is proper. Enter. Now let's try to deliver this consignment return. Okay. You don't need to pick up returns, right? So we are directly going to do a post goods receipt. Post goods receipt is done. Now can we go check the stock MMBE? What is the stock situation? 44 plus 6. So 6 has been returned to the lot. Earlier, the lot had a quantity of 44. Now 6 quantity has been returned to the lot. Now the lot has 50. Now there is 50 quantity available in the lot for the, for the company to go pick up from. Now you can do a consignment pickup if necessary for the 50 and take back all the goods in the lot. So 44 plus the 6 is 50 in the lot. Now this has been delivered, BGI, and this has been billed. Now this is, this is not billed yet. Let's go build the consignment return. How do you do it? BF01. This delivery number is here. Enter. Save. Okay. This has been billed. Okay, everybody is clear on these four processes and how to do them in the system? Any questions here? Okay, <clears throat> now, the next thing that we need to understand is the accounting and how it is different from the standard accounting. Okay, I'm going to move that and start fresh. So consignment fill up, consignment pick up, consignment issue, consignment return. These are the four processes, right? So what happens during PGI delivery? In this case of a delivery, when PGI is done, your inventory goes down. And typically in a sale, the cost of goods goes up. In this case of consignment fill up, special stock goes up. And that's what we see in MMP. The special stock has risen by 50 or 60, whatever number. <coughs> okay? This accounting is very important. So what happens to accounting at PGI in a consignment fill up? Inventory goes down and cost of goods sold does not affect, but the special stock is affected. Now, a consignment pickup, when you do a delivery and PGI, the inventory goes up and the special stock goes down. This also we have seen. So, uh, Sivan, this is... Yes. Uh, so, this, but the special stock is still considered overall inventory, right? So, on the balance sheet, it is... Overall stock. inventory, but what is the difference between special stock and the unrestricted stock? Special stock is restricted stock, right? It's only to be sold to a particular customer. Well, it is already at the customer's premises with the intention of selling to that customer. So it's not available for the rest of the customers. That is special. Okay. Right? <coughs> so in
in a case of a consignment issue, your inventory, what happens to the inventory? Nothing happens because your inventory is already at the customer's location. So your inventory is not affected. So what is affected? Special stock goes down and cost of goods sold goes up. In the case of a consignment return, special stock goes up and cost of goods sold goes down. Okay? <coughs> so if you look at a sale, what's a sale in the case of consignment? First you need to take the goods from the warehouse. Okay? This is the warehouse and this is the customer's location customer's lot. So in the case of a consignment, the sale is when you take the goods, put them in the lot, and then the customer consumes goods from the lot. That is when an actual sale happens. So if you look at, this is this process is what? Consignment fill up. This process is what? Consignment issue. If you look at the net effect in terms of inventory on consignment fill up and consignment issue, consignment fill up the inventory goes down, special stock goes up. <coughs> the next process is consignment issue. The special stock goes up. In this case, special stock goes down. Both of these are cancelled. And the net effect is inventory goes up and cost of goods goes. The inventory goes down and cost of goods goes up. Which is what happens in a real sale. If you do an order LF, LF, what happens in LF when you do PGA? Cost of goods sold goes up inventory goes down. So the special stock is more or less like an intermediary a lot whereby in a consignment fill up instead of COGS the special stock goes up in a consignment issue the corresponding special stock goes down and cost of food sold goes up. Okay? This is just a um, it's just so that you understand you know that the net effect of a consignment fill up and issue is an actual sale, but the intermediary step is the special stock. Same with the return, you can correlate with the return. The special stock goes down, special stock goes up, and constant goes goes down, and inventory goes up. <coughs> okay, this is the material accounting from a consignment perspective. Everybody is clear on that. Now, what happens to the invoicing part, the actual accounting, the financial accounting, the sales accounting? This cannot be invoiced. This cannot be invoiced. We have seen that. Right? Now, when this happens, how does the accounting work? Is it going to be any different? No. The customer is debited and revenue is credited. Now you would understand this if you have gone through account determination. I'm not going to go over that again. And in the case of a consignment return, the customer is credited and revenue is debited. So from an accounting perspective when you do invoicing, so this is sales this is delivery, this is billing. In the case of fill up and pick up, there is no billing documents. In the case of issue and return, this is regular to a standard invoice and this is similar to a standard return <coughs> or a credit. Okay, so what is most important here is this part. What happens to the inventory, the theory part of it? is very important. This is where you might be asked questions. So please make sure you understand this part very, very well. Okay. The same things are repeated here in this PowerPoint. So consignment fill up, how to do this. And in a case of a fill up, there is no pricing. See, generally it's not relevant for billing. So what's the point in putting a price there? So in the case of a consignment fill-up, if you do the PGI, look at the movement type. The movement type is going to be different. It is 631. Where is it configured? Again, 
your corresponding schedule line has that movement type. So for consignment, the schedule line is going to be E1 and the movement type is 631, which will move the stock from unrestricted use to special stock. In the special stock, if you go to MMBE, can will get increased by the corresponding amount. Consignment issue is relevant for pricing, is relevant for delivery, is relevant for billing, and you can go to you can create a delivery, you can create a billing for it, you can go to MMBE and see that the you know, stock or special stock goes down by so much. Okay, and you can see the corresponding movement type also at 633. See, different than the standard movement type. Standard is 601. Here it is 631, 632, 633, 634. Consignment returns, same thing. Now this is what happens from a material accounts perspective. Unrestricted stock goes down, consignment stock goes up. Cost of goods account goes up, consignment stock goes down. In the case of a consignment issue. Consignment returns, what happens? Consignment pickup, what happens? The, the actual accounting after invoicing is the same with any regular sale, no different than a regular invoice or regular credit for returns. It's only at the time of material accounting that the accounting is a little different than the way standard accounting is done in a regular delivery related uh, PGI or a regular returns related PGI. That's that is the key that you should understand how the accounts are getting manipulated. Any questions here? All right, and I'll stop here and. Uh, any, if you don't have any questions, we'll stop here and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. <clears throat> and for tomorrow, um,